It's no secret the economy has been booming over the last year, and you need look no further for examples of this than the art market, which has seen a number of huge sales. Recently, Maria sat down with gallery owner Larry Gagosian to talk about this recent art renaissance. How would you characterize the art market today? It's, it's, in, it's in great shape. I, I think by, by all accounts, it's, it's, a, it's a healthy market. It's, it's a market that's uh, broadening. And uh, there, I mean, there's collectors at all levels, um, from entry to, you know, mega collectors seem to be quite active. I mean, we had a great year, and I think the general market um, is, is in terrific shape right now. And what's driving it? I mean, you know, when you see some of the outsized sales that we've been talking about recently, it's really eye-popping. What, what's behind it? Well, naturally, liquidity is a, is a big factor in any market, and there seems to be a lot of money in the world. Um, and there, there's a lot of um, discretionary money, and art has become, at the same time, a much more popular uh, pursuit, uh, hobby, I hate to use the phrase, but asset class, because I don't really like to look at art that way. I think that's a dangerous way to look at it in some respects, but it's certainly a factor. Some people buy art because they, uh, they're they confident that it'll be a good store of value. And uh, this is this is kind of a recent phenomenon. I mean, the, the art market has become this kind of global phenomenon. I mean, people collected art in all cultures for thousands of years, literally. But the market, what we're talking about right now, is, is in some ways a, a new phenomenon. The, the, the type of market that, that we're talking about is, is a relatively new uh, animal. And, uh, um, you know, it's great for artists because if you're, if you're a talented artist and uh, you, you, you're entering the market now as, as a young artist who really has talent, I think you're going to find that there are people out there who are going to be gonna collecting your work. So it's great for young artists to... Uh, of course, you got to be good. Not everything. Not everything. And not all art is created equally. I'm glad you mentioned young artists. I want to ask you about that. But first, let me go back to something you said because it, it struck me. And you said, you know, it, it's different. I mean, what, why? Why do you see this particular moment different? What's different about it? What's different about it is. Um, it's not really different. It's just more of what we've what we've experienced before. Um, Twenty years ago, there were really no significant collectors of contemporary art in China uh, or the Middle East, um, Latin America. So, when when the, the word globalization is, is, you know, people get tired of hearing it, but the art market has certainly benefited from globalization. So, what's different now is you can transmit information very quickly. Uh, we have 16 galleries literally all over the world and uh, for instance somebody who works in our gallery in Hong Kong may have access to a particular painting and they liaison with our gallery in Geneva and this goes on we're not the only gallery that does that by the way other galleries have you know, this kind of a footprint maybe not quite as many galleries but they have access to the same electronic communication this has really fueled the market um, it's also allowed collectors to have more transparency, to have access to more transparency about prices, which gives the market more confidence. So I think it's a convergence of these things that we're seeing now, and it's, it's resulted in a very healthy art market. So globalization is really critical here because you've got so much money from around the world coming into America right now. This is one of the biggest destinations, art. Right. Well, New York particularly. And New York, I mean, right. It's a great asset for the city of New York is, is, is the art culture, the museums, the galleries, the artists that work here. So uh, New York's benefited enormously from the, um, from the popularity of art. There are some things that don't lose their value. I mean, when you look at diamonds, when you look at high-end, you know, uh, accessories even, what would you say about the art market? Do, do it's not a luxury good. It's not a luxury product. I mean, it, it may appeal to people who buy Hermes bags, but it's not an Hermes bag. Um, and you can't simply call a factory and say, give me a thousand more bags or what. I mean, they're great bags, don't get me wrong. But it, it's a controlled, it, there's controlled supply by the very nature of, of how it's created. So there's scarcity and there's rarity and there's always the hand of the artist um, involved and, and that makes it different than, it's sometimes people try to categorize it as a luxury, it's, it's, a, it's a disservice to art in my, in my opinion and it, really does, and it really distorts the true nature of the market.
This is one of Roy Lichtenstein's early girl paintings uh, from his pop art period, 1962. There may be, I don't know, 30, 35 paintings from this period uh, depicting women in this kind of idealized comic strip fashion. And this one is, um, I'm rising of Janet Lee, the actress Janet Lee, for some reason. I, I don't think that would, it may have been inspired by Janet Lee. How, how many times would something like this, or how many times has this changed hands, would you say? I, I don't know exactly, but I would guess, I should know six or seven times probably since it was painted.